contract must be uh, honored. That contract must be kept. But what do we mean by an oath? Well, an oath is a solemn appeal to the divine by invocation and the presence of at least two witnesses that a pronouncement is true and a promise is binding. And this goes back to the, the base law of the uh, Holy Imperial Empire, uh, to Constantine, who was British, and then, of course, to Charlemagne and the Christian knights and what they built their empires on. And what the Florentine and the Venetian bankers, when they started to build their indulgences, realised, is that if people keep their word, then they can monetize those. And that's exactly what they did. They monetized our word. We being honorable, we being moral beings, ethical beings, believing in scripture, believing in, in the faith that we believe in and, and obeying that faith are reliable to the point that our word creates money. Our word creates promissory notes. And that's the purpose of the court. Now, if you want to know what the origin of the word court is, it is not the word origin that they say being some open ground. It comes from the Latin courtio, C-A-U-T-I-O, courtio. And what does courtio mean? Well, courtio means to bond, to securitize, and to bail. Sound familiar? To bond, to securitize, and to bail. In other words, in other words, to monetize our vow and our oath. That is the function of a court, not the law, but to monetize oaths. And that comes from the guilds of Florence and the guild of judges and notaries. So when we think of the court, and this is crucial, the law is the bank. It has nothing to do with uh, common law as we think of it, they are there merely to bond our vow, our oath, our sign, our seal. And if we do not give a clear vow or oath or seal or sign, then that is worthless to them, utterly worthless. And so if your vow, oath and energy is worthless, then there is no point pursuing the case. And this is the importance of staying in honour and the importance of understanding what we mean by under duress and necessity. Because when you are under duress, and this is actually the canon law of the Roman cult. The Roman cult make this clear. And just because a judge, a prosecutor, an attorney general can't be damned to understand the meaning of their own laws, refusing to read and acting as ignorant morons doesn't mean that it's not true. The canon law of the Catholic Church states loud and clear that if a vow or an oath is given under duress, it is worthless. If a signature is given under duress, it is worthless. And the senior councils know this. Even if the judge you're meeting does not, or the prosecutor you're meeting does not, they who run the system absolutely know that it is worthless. The test is if you hold your ground. So, what do we mean by necessity? Well, I'm going to open, open up a new browser. I'm going to open up to the canons of positive law and one of the improvements that we've made in defining under Article 113, remember, 113, what we mean by necessity. So I'm just going to read out the first definition of necessity. Canon 1403. Necessity is the unavoidable requirement of a party to consent, act or perform in a manner that they would not otherwise do if not for the presence of some clear need, threat, coercion, danger or risk. Hence, any oath, vow, sign or seal given under necessity 
has no legal validity or value. They cannot monetize a worthless vow, oath, sign or seal. So how do we deal with this? Well, in respectful way, you can state to the judge at any point in the proceedings uh, that, Your Honour, uh, you know, if they give an order for a psych evaluation, you can say, Your, Your Honour, um, in respect of the law, I will comply, but my compliance is not my consent, as I do so out of necessity under duress. And I request that is recorded on the record. Now, if you state it in a very respectful way, in such a manner, the judge realises that the psych evaluation on what you've just said has no value whatsoever to him. He cannot use that trick to go and declare you incompetent. He or she can't. Why? You've just said that anything that takes place during that psych eval will be under duress. And as such, means nothing. Because remember, these people are pure parasites. They depend on your energy to bond. If your energy is compromised, they have nothing to bond. Similarly, if someone forces you to sign, they arrest you and say, sign here. You know if you don't sign, there's going to be someone over your shoulder, bending your arm, and look, they taser people. So, I mean, we are talking about real present danger. Well, sign your name, but put V, full stop, C, full stop. And if they say, you can't put that, you can put three ellipses, dot, dot, dot. But you make it clear somewhere on your signature, either three, dot, 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 which is an ellipse, which means what you wanted to say, you cannot. And that's part of their trickery. Or V, dot, C, Um, which is via coactus, and the spelling of that will be up on the site so you can see it, but effectively means under duress in Latin. I wouldn't suggest saying under duress in your signature because the people that are forcing you to sign it and putting pressure on you and behaving badly can probably still read English and they'd see it, but most wouldn't understand v.c. And of course, if they're listening to this call and they're thinking, oh, well, if someone does that now, we won't let it happen, remember... No one can force you to sign. No one can force you to promise. And if they're forcing you, then make it clear that it's under duress. Absolutely make it clear. Now, what about this issue of when we don't come to court and they send out an arrest warrant and they still fire away? If they do need our vow and they do need our oath, then how is it that they can still go ahead and and create bonds in our absence? And here's the trick. And this is building this system. This is how this system tricks us. If we lose our honour in a clear and unmistakable way, then they declare that we're dishonourable. That means we are delinquent. And therefore, they can evoke their powers already reserved as the power of our attorney as we are now incompetent. That's their reserved powers. They already have that in place. Once we demonstrate dishonour to the court, they can use their existing system to use our negative energy, our dishonourable energy, to bond us. And that's exactly what they're doing. So if you put yourself in dishonour, you give them the opportunity, even though it is corrupt, but you give them the opportunity through the negative to steal your energy and bond you. The only way to stop these vampires of energy, these parasites, is to remain honourable and understand that under necessity, no one is demanding that you chop off your arm. No one is demanding that you walk into jail. Stand your ground, stand your faith, be who you are, know who you are, and say, Your Honour, I consent Sorry, I comply out of necessity. I don't consent. I comply out of necessity, but my compliance is not consent as I'm under duress. And if they make a sentence to you, remember that that is an offer. 
I'm not referring to a sentence. A sentence is an offer, and you will always have the opportunity to say, Your Honour, I gratefully decline your offer. I'm really talking about the orders, a psych eval, all of that. So why? Why is it overwhelmingly throughout the truth movement are we seeing this promotion of defy, disobey, don't attend, don't, don't feed the animal? What, what is going on? Well, how do you think the system would prefer to deal with us, particularly as we acquire knowledge? Do you really think a judge a prosecutor wants any of you in their courts to expose their ignorance? I don't think so. What's the easiest process for them? Something that they have become very good at. That's right, getting you in dishonour. If you're in dishonour, they know exactly what to do. So it's no surprising, it's not surprising that they're using... Uh, marshals coming to people's doors, police coming, having chats, don't send that in, don't follow through, using every trick in the book to encourage you not to comply. They don't want you to comply. They don't want you to stay in honour. They are promoting as much as they can to get people to, to, to think that they are being emboldened by defying their system. Why? Because they will use your dishonour against you and that's exactly what they're doing now you want to make a change on what we've been up against you want to make a change in the way people are finding themselves in court remain honorable remain respectful and understand the enormous power that they cannot take from you because they need your energy but the enormous power that you hold when you remain in honor Okay. Well, given we've only got probably about another half an hour and a bit to talk about some of these other areas, like the updates to the ecclesiastical deed, the canons, uh, slavery and, and uh, foreclosure, uh, I'm, I'm going to talk about um, the updates to the ecclesiastical information. Then I'm going to talk about foreclosures because I don't want to run out of time. This is something that is really important and I want to show, explain to you what we're doing on that. And then I really want to cover this area of slavery because I know many of you, if you're talking to your friends, neighbours, you know, I know it's like to be a black sheep and people say you're mad or, <laughs> in my case, you think I'm a Jesuit. But, you know, people will say things at you and they'll laugh. Uh, I want to show you just, just the fact that the proof is, is there in plain sight. And if they want to be ignorant, then you let them know. By all means, keep your head in the sand, but don't call this a conspiracy because the proof is in plain sight, and you'd have to be an idiot to ignore it. So let's talk about foreclosures. Oh, sorry, let me talk about ecclesiastical deeds and updates and then foreclosures. So on the page that I was mentioning before from one-heaven.org, when you open that up, you'll see a section there on ecclesiastical uh, deed polls. Uh, you'll see that there have been some new pages added to it. And this is as we go and you ask questions and have concerns and need refinements. Uh, this is an evolving process and we are trying our level best to improve this and strengthen this. So when you get on there, you'll see that uh, it's a little bit easier to read and the information and questions that a number of you had on the Uniform Commercial Code System now has a page there on that, plus a little bit more clarity on how that fits into the process with your deeds. Uh, there was quite a bit of question in terms of sending the deed poll and the uncertainty between sending it uh, in a case of a foreclosure or sending it in case of a, of a court case versus sending it to the executives and administrators uh, of the care of the registrar. So there's a page there uh, under EDP use where I, I try and make clear that for the most part, the ecclesiastical deed is probably better served being sent to the executives and administrators care of the registrar of the vital statistics or the birth, deaths and marriages rather than 
introducing into a court case, where it be a foreclosure or some other case, uh, where you are not facing yourself dying.